This is the U.S. intelligence agency, Mind Control. This group, made up of gay furries, targeted the Heritage Foundation and their Project 2025 and released some uh, chat logs. Wow, based. So now the group, known as Siege Sect, released screenshots of conversation between one of the hackers and a Heritage Foundation executive named Mike Howell. Uh, now they had posted about two gigabytes of data online. They say that re they had retrieved from the Foundation's server. There was a lot more information that they decided not to release because it was junk, nonsense, not really uh, you know, practical, effective, whatever. Uh, to their goals. So now in a Telegram post on Tuesday, the hackers had uh, wrote, Project 2025 threatens the rights of abortion healthcare and LGBT plus, uh, LGBTQ plus communities in particular. So of course, we won't stand for that. Now the post included a screenshot of what appeared to be lines of foundation user data and a link to a database believed to contain passwords, email addresses, and full names of the Heritage Foundation website users, including government employees. Ooh. And the think tank's president, Kevin Roberts, who recently talked about how uh, 2025 will be a bloodless, or they're in the middle of a bloodless revolution if the left allows it to be. So basically, lay down, submit, uh, and we may not kill you. Oh, <laughs> that's horrifying. Uh, now, that said, Heritage Foundation, they said, oh, we were not, we weren't actually hacked. Uh, he said, um, this is uh, according to a spokesperson. An organized group stumbled upon a two-year-old archive of the Daily Signal website that was available on a public-facing website owned by a contractor. The information attained was limited to usernames, names, email addresses, and incomplete password information of both heritage and non-heritage content contributors, <clears throat> as well as article comments and the IP addresses of the commenter. No heritage systems were breached at any time, and all heritage databases and websites remain secure including the Project 2025. <clears throat> that said, I don't know if that's true or not, um, there was a chat between Howell and one of the hackers with the username of Vio. Now, it started out kind of calm, but it got pretty heated pretty quickly. Now, Howell had started the conversation with asking, hey, why did you do this? Uh, what, do, what are you looking for? What are you seeking? What are you trying to threaten us with, okay? Uh, now, Vio responded, by saying, we want to make a message and shine a light on who exactly supports the Heritage Foundation. We don't want anything more than that. Not money and not fame. We're strongly against Project 2025 and everything the Heritage Foundation stands for. Okay. Uh, now, they also uh, say that Siege Sect was part of the campaign against organizations that oppose trans rights. So the conversation started that way uh, and then got pretty nasty. Uh, on the part of Howell, which is to be expected because Howell is a bigot transphobe, okay? Uh, and in fact, um, Howell had said, quote, closeted furries will be presented to the world for the degenerate perverts they are. So to basically expose who they are, and then added, your means are minuscule compared to- This guy's boring. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to the next guy. Hello, guys you. and gals, me, Mudahar, and today we got to talk about the furries hacking politics. I think the, he'll do it better. <laughs> we got to talk about furries hacking nuclear labs. We'll figure it out. Now, this week, there's been no, a no, lot of fun saying. stuff it's to like, talk about when it comes to people it's getting... longer, it's already mm. more engaging than that guy. Mm -hmm. Hacked, okay? You work in the vehicle industry? Well, you might realize that dealerships lost a billion dollars after CDK Global ended up being hacked, to the point where a $25 million ransom was paid, allegedly, Damn. just so these people could get back in business. You ever think to yourself, well, Muda, how bad can things really get when you got to pay $25 million after your entire industry loses about a billion dollars? Yeah, you kind of wish, you know, you paid that earlier, but it's never worth negotiating with cyber terrorists, okay? So today we're looking at a story where the actual hackers didn't really go after money. Everything was politically motivated. So to give an idea, we're looking at a group known as Siege so Sect. Now, if you're looking at this uwu right here, that uwu comes from the old Telegram, where Siege Sec, a massive group that has actually disbanded in the last couple of days after performing their biggest hack on the Heritage Foundation, where they uh, basically hacked the people behind this, you know, crazy thing like Project 2025, which we'll kind of get into. I'm not a political channel. I'm just here to talk about the actual hack itself. So as they describe themselves, they are gay furry hackers. <laughs> and as they've shown in this ASCII art, there are three members here. Bio, Cry, and Kit. 
And over here, they've said, oh, it's time for us to disband. Yeah, it's a sudden announcement. We plan to disband later today or tomorrow. But given the circumstances, I believe it's best we do so now for our own mental health, the stress of mass publicity, and to avoid the eye of the Federal Bureau of Intelligence. Fair enough. Now, I'm just going to say for the record, I don't think the FBI is ever for going to get it. I think these three little cat boy furries, they're going to be on the FBI radar for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> because we're going to look at some of their wild hacks, okay? I've been considering quitting cybercrime lately. And the other members have agreed it's time to let Quitting this rest. So usually these kind of groups are an amalgamation of talented individuals. And once their mission in life is done, they can basically ride off into the sunset with whatever riches and you know fame they've collected. And uh, it is what it is. It's often better to split rather than be caught and effectively start finger pointing at each other. I think these people all know there is no honor amongst criminals. And that's why it's better to go off in your own directions and basically hide rather than and remain a unit and consistently have law enforcement. You know, This is why if you're an anarchist hacker group, and you don't talk to cops, and then you know. Well, like, cause like our, cool. cause like we did like cyber attacks against Daesh, right? Mm. Like, I have no idea who was in that group. Probably people who worked for the United States, you know, and shit like that. Yeah. But like, some of those people were probably people that were inside the Caliphate region. You know, people in Iraq and Syria who hated them. Mm-hmm. You know, and they if they got if they got found out that they were the people, then they get it, bounties put on them and shit. Yeah, hunting you down. So you can keep scrolling up and up and up, and you can find out that they've basically been hacking a fair amount of crazy things here. For instance, one of their hacks, very uh, you know, recently July seventh, was actually the NATO portal. So here you can actually open up this <laughs> image real quick and just show people that they were in fact apparently hacking around NATO portals, NATO information. They basically said we breached cool. NATO portals for the third time. We were able to access tens of thousands of documents from NATO headquarter consultation, command and control Epic. portal. Unfortunately, due to technical issues, we weren't able to automate exfiltration of the full set of documents. Yeah, you're reading it right here, ladies and gentlemen. They are, in fact, hacking NATO, all right? One of the biggest defense treaties imaginable, all right? So, according to... Uh, that's a bad idea. That's a real bad idea. You'll get labeled a combatant, and you'll get assassinated. Just so you're aware. Um, they, they already know who you are. Don't do that. That's a bad idea. They don't necessarily <laughs> know who they are. It's fucking NATO. <laughs> nah, but the hackers, the only way to catch them is like if you have somebody, you catch one person in the group and they turn on each other. That's mm. why the, the strategy of disbanding works so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's like, if, <laughs> that that's especially in like wartime scenarios. Like if NATO's in war and you're hacking NATO, uh, you'll get labeled a combatant. Don't do that. What are they going to do? They can't see them. They don't know who it is. Okay. Better them than somebody else, you know? If they can find a breach, somebody else can. So, sure, procedure doesn't like... change until something goes wrong. True. They're helping. How? Hmm. Well, they're not an enemy adversary finding that hole. That's how. Depends who they're finding that hole for. Depends if they sold the information or just did it mm. for the lulls. A lot of people will. Well, do I it think for I think lulls. that I think that's actually more the uh, the uh, the point there is if it's if it's sold if the information's sold, then you all you're doing it as an agent. Listen. Then you'll get labeled a, a a combatant. Listen. Okay. Well, what happened with Trump? Then he's not a combatant yet. Okay. Now listen. Listen. Not at war. Okay, let me explain what type of person they are, and you, let me know if you you see where I'm going with this. Okay, a lot of them probably like trains. <laughs> no, I, I get that, but still what it actually got leaked out at all was around 845 megabytes of compressed data information that belonged to 31 actual nations. And this was something that NATO actually obviously was investigating on to make sure if it was actually valid or not. So when they were asked about why did you even hack NATO, was there a political reason for it? Because people kind of assumed maybe it was due to the Russian-Ukraine invasion. Uh, what they basically said was it has nothing to do with that. It's a retaliation against the countries of NATOs for their attack on human rights. And also it's fun to leak documents. <laughs> oh boy. The <laughs> I told you, 
the game for I told you. Know, it's people getting that's back. Hysterical. And that's why they did it. That's hysterical. All right, I respect this. This is funny. <laughs> this is great. One thing, but when you add the furries to it and all the world headlines, that just makes you look even dumber. <laughs> so here well, they the actually had worked with a group, you. the threat intelligence well, firm like, known as CloudSec, uh, like and what they I said was, was they... I was worried about the shit that I was doing with, like, ISIS and shit. Because, like, I like I didn't do any hacking, but people, like, in the group I was with, like, that mm. I was associated with, sure did. <laughs> And, like, I don't know anything about them, right? Because, like, that's the whole point of one of these groups. You don't know who anyone is. Mm -hmm. And, like, I also have three different identities in the group as well. Because, like, you know, so, like, I'm even, like, infiltrating my own group and working as a double agent against myself. <laughs> right? Because that's, so that's, because that's how you, like, ver verify shit, right? So if you're uh, controlling yes. all the agents interacting with somebody... And you build different relationships, and each one you have a different personality directive mm. going on. You'll build different relationships with them, and they'll tell someone that you control because they trust you. And you sow like deceit with another person, right? Mm -hmm. So then they start not trusting that person. So then you like gossip with them about how shitty that other person is, right? And this builds up a rapport where they will tell you secrets. <laughs> That's so funny. Yep. <laughs> Analyze the data, and the data actually contained uh, three really classified easy. documents, but more importantly, 8,000 records of the personnel. So names, companies, units, working groups, job titles, business addresses, home addresses, and photos. Damn. And that is very dangerous, especially when you're working in a field like NATO, really any military affiliated field. You don't want your personal home information out there because then you're involving more people in danger that are more than just you. At least, you know, when you sign up for the military, you're going to be in danger. But your family, I mean, you, you try to keep them pretty separated from all of this. And that's where, again, even the people watching this get a little bit confused by these situations. Like, what is this actually doing? So according to these guys, what they said is, fuck every country oh, wow. supporting Israel, especially those in NATO. In addition to this new breach, they basically re-released the last two breaches, eight gigabytes, to ensure the most leaked documents are in circulation. <laughs> Stay tuned when we leak Joe Biden's DMs. Oh, shit. <laughs> so they actually apparently did leak, like, gigabytes worth of, like, NATO documents. So I'm actually looking at them right here. NATO v1, NATO v2, NATO v3, all, you know, basically Damn. tarred up and spread on the internet. And these are still available to download right now. Now, would I recommend you download NATO documentation and filter through it? Probably wouldn't invoke myself into this pile. Uh, also, you know, it just, it, this is one of those things where it's like, you just want to look at the train wreck. You don't want to jump in the middle of the trains actually impacting. And again, one of their other operations was Operation Israel, all right, where obviously they discussed it, where this is their first Israel run. They breached two major Israeli telecommunication companies, Bezek and Kelcom. So anyways, okay. these gay furries ended up revealing the actual personal information of the people that were working in these IT companies and telecom companies. What they had done was they accessed this administration's portal and took a peek at clientele emails and, you know, emails related to power companies, as they say, construction companies, and very more. So clearly this is a uh, scary situation, right? They're actually touching, at least from one mention, critical infrastructure when we're talking about power companies, right? So obviously then they were doing smaller things. Well, okay, I'm not going to say that. It's like hacking church websites. So it's kind of insane how they go from like, you know, oh. Maybe they should have gone further. Hacking <laughs> NATO <laughs> to hacking, you know, the average church or whatever, right? So again, all political motivated crimes here. I mean, that's a pretty good way to stop Israel from committing genocide. Slowly wipe out their infrastructure. <laughs> And again, the one big crime that I wanted to really showcase that kind of blew me away a little bit was their attack on the Idaho National Laboratory. So in November 2023, uh, for anybody that was focusing and following the, uh, you know, gay furry hacking group that existed, you saw a headline known as they breached a nuclear lab. And they basically demanded the nuclear Ethnic. lab, not for money or information or anything, but so that they could research cat girls, okay? You know, I'm not even joking. Like, I swear to God, this is actually a fucking real demand by an actual hacking group, okay? <laughs> Like, I'm not even joking. What? So again, what had happened was the Idaho National Laboratory experienced what they called a massive data breach. Employee information was basically leaked on the entire internet for the world to see. And of course, if you look very carefully at this one image, the Idaho National Laboratory, it is, from my understanding, underneath the uh, purview of the United States Department of Energy. Okay, so this is a very, very, very serious situation. Obviously, when you involve the U.S. government and its entities, that's when their response to you is going to be catastrophic. So what they had said was, earlier this morning, Idaho National Laboratory determined that it was the target of a cybersecurity data breach, affecting the server supporting its Oracle HCM system, which supports human resource applications. IML has taken immediate action to protect employee data. 
So basically what they said was they were in touch with federal law enforcement agencies like the FBI and the Homeland Security's cybersecurity and infrastructure security agency to investigate the extent of the data impacted in that incident. So Oracle's human capital management is effectively a cloud solution software for, again, human resource solutions. So because of one actual issue in the software, it was used to exploit and gain access to employee records who were underneath the human resources management, as you can understand. And according to the Idaho National Laboratory, they confirmed that the release of information was for many current employees, so postdocs, graduate fellows, interns, dependents, and the spouses in those data breaches. So again, all of their personally identifiable information was impacted. And that is the ultimate problem of the situation too, right? Like no matter what your politics really comes down to, leaking the PII of people who basically do research work every single day isn't really something that is going to be beneficial, all right? It puts them in danger. It puts their identity in danger. Sure. So some of the yeah. quotes they had a month later when talking about this was, all I want for Christmas is the destruction of the government. <laughs> the day of the furry. The, threat. <laughs> the national security That's they so are. Oh boy. All right, so now that you know that these guys are some of the most unhinged furry hackers you could find, or at least used to be able to find, yet yeah, now it moves up to the... F I wouldn't call it unhinged. It seems pretty targeted and focused. Final act of the story, the Project 2025 hack. <laughs> now, if you don't know what Project 2025 is, in the last uh, few weeks, it has gained so much attention uh, in you know just discussion across the United States and Canada. Uh, basically, for anybody that doesn't know what this is, it's actually a uh, project that has been detailed by a group known as the Heritage Foundation. Now, if you go to the Heritage Foundation's website, you can see that it is a website that is, again, a think tank for the United States conservative movement. So here you can see that, as you can see, Project 2025, Presidential Transition Project. Now, if you actually read into some of it, they'll tell you what they are building now for a conservative victory is through policy, personnel, and training. So what they've said, it is not enough for conservatives to win elections. If we're going to rescue the country from the grip of the radical left, we need both a governing agenda and the right people in place. I'm so glad we finally got a video that's covering this. Anytime he says radical left, replace it with Jew. And just repeat the rhetoric. Ready to carry this agenda out on day one of the next need, both a, it is not enough for conservatives to win elections. If we're going to rescue the country from the grip of the radical left, we need both a governing agenda and the right people in place ready to carry this agenda out on day one of the next conservative administration. And that is what the goal of the 2025 presidential transition project is. So again, people have been kind of parsing through this 922 page PDF of, again, discussing this project 2025. And again, this is the, their own group. This is heritage by themselves detailing, again, their plans for every single branch of the United States government and what they want to do for it to initiate, initiate their conservative ideology. So obviously it contains a lot of stuff that if you're on the left side of politics, you probably won't agree with, okay? And if you're on the right side of politics, you may agree with. Hell, there are some people on the right side, like Donald Trump, who basically say, I don't know anything about Project 2025. I have no idea who is behind it. I disagree with some of the things they're saying, and some of the things they are saying are absolutely ridiculous and abysmal. Anything they do, I wish them luck, but I have nothing to do with them. <laughs> you know, that if that's Trump saying it, boy, they must be really on the right. God damn, it must be insane. Now, obviously, I haven't looked through it because Jesus I'm not a political Christ, channel. Dude. I think it's better if you want to get your political ideology from somebody that is more expert oh on that. God. But what I will be discussing is the hack that took place on the Heritage Foundation. He literally just took that Trump tweet, literally. Not as like a PR post to distance himself from it because his supporters don't read the well, news. Well, what did you expect from a normie? Very cool. Foundation. So SiegeSec, a few days ago, said their final hack. Over the past seven days, we released a hack every day from NATO to Israel. We attacked many, but we have one more gift. We hacked the Heritage Foundation. Holy moly. The Heritage Foundation is a conservative think tank in America among the most influential public policy organizations. And what they are doing is leading Project 2025. So according to the Siege Set guys, Project 2025 threatens the rights of abortion healthcare, LGBTQ plus communities, and that's why they gained access to their database with user data, logs, and juicy info, and they access 200 gigabytes of mostly useful list files in their gigabytes. Server. So while they won't be leaked, what they did leak was a whole bunch of other information. And what they leaked was the passwords, email addresses, Epic. full names of every user, every government employee in the United States, even the heritage president. Kevin Roberts. So leaking any information like that, goddamn, especially if you're an active government officer, <laughs> it's some scary shit. So again, a whole amount of stuff had happened. People have started talking about it. There were denials into what had occurred, right? Like obviously the Heritage Foundation, from what I understand, they insisted they were not hacked by any gay furries, okay? That was one of the headlines going around. 
So obviously, in order to protect their honor, right, the furries have to respond. Many articles and social media posts about these breaches have caught the attention of many people. One of them happened to be the executive director, Mike Howell. Mike Howell reached out to us at first to ask questions to understand our motives and why we breached his organization. And then he proceeded to throw insults, threats, and claimed our existence was against nature. <laughs> so then they got a chat log, boys, and we're going to read the fucking chat log. So the chat log involves Mike Howell. This is Mike Howell, the Heritage Foundation's oversight project. I'd like to so chat. Good. Would you be willing to have a call? And then Vio says, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not able to call. I'll stick to text communications. If you have another platform you'd prefer, I'm opening to adapting how I can. Mike Howell's, this platform's fine. What is that you are seeking or threatening? And Vio's like, we want to make a message and shine light on who exactly supports the Heritage Foundation. We don't <laughs> want anything more than that. Not money, not fame. We're strongly against Project 2025 and everything the Heritage Foundation stands for. Is that why you hacked us? Just for that? Yeah, it should be obvious that's all we want based on our history as a hacktivist group. We don't seek money. Again, very politically motivated. Mike Howell, okay, listen to me closely. We're in the process of identifying and outing members of your group. <laughs> Reputations and lives will be destroyed. Closeted furries will be presented to the world for the degenerate perverts. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta imagine like somebody sitting in a suit typing that typing that sentence away on their signal app, dude. You cannot hide. Your means are minuscule compared to mine. You can now either turn yourself in or you can cooperate. It almost sounds funny. like John Wick almost, right? Like it's crazy shit. Uh, none of our members will be identified or outed by your organization built on hatred. <laughs> the only ones deserving of a destroyed life are those within your organization. You want me to cooperate with what? Spreading misinformation and hatred? We won't turn against our own people. Yeah, just given given their history and their consistency, I have no issue. What, with the gay furries? Yeah, go oh, for weird. it. Now you're pro-furry? You no, I'm pro-hacktivist. You pervert. Mm-hmm. Your own people turned against nature. We will only accelerate the cycle. Nature count? has no defined set of rules, no authority, just like it should be. Humans can do what they want, and yet you choose to support an organization to harm innocent people. Why? How can you justify this to yourself, knowing you're threatening the rights and lives of other human people? The people you hate could be anyone, your friend, your mom, your sibling. God created nature, and nature's laws are vicious. It is why you have to put on perverted animal costume to satisfy your sexual people. deviances. It is why you are forced to hide like a coward. You violated our rights and broke the law. You have oh no God. standing to discuss such matters. Oh my God. The rights your org violates will be ten times worse than any crime I've committed. You do not follow God if you use religion as a crutch to hate people. Mike says, would you like to meet virtually or send an emissary to meet me in person? I would like to be left alone without my rights being threatened. Are you aware that you might you won't be able to wear a furry tiger costume when you're getting pounded in the ass? <laughs> in the federal president. Jesus fucking next year. Christ. Ooh. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh man! Oh man! The, oh, the response. <laughs> they type that out. Vio says such unprofessional language from an executive director. Would you mind if I share this? Please share widely. <laughs> I hope the word spreads as fast as the STDs do in your degenerate community. Oh Very my community. god! Meow! An image of a cat. Bestiality is a weird sin. It shows you've got a few clicks too far. <laughs> What's your opinion on war? My advice is you get out of mommy's basement, iron this your shirt, buy a girl a drink, They're and ask Ron instead of him. This is great. Yeah, googling new deviants is free to can you, I, can you imagine how hard they're laughing through this? <laughs> I bet you he's going to be like, "You're totally scared." <laughs> this is why you're making jokes. This is yeah, that's like what's like happen. this guy. It's so funny because it's like, it's like, honey, you don't know who where you are. <laughs> like Heritage Foundation, you think Heritage Foundation is going to bring them down when they just hit NATO? Like, oh, honey. Oh, honey. They are not scared of you. You poor thing. You have no idea where you are. You know? It's so funny. Oh, man. I'm writing a post about you. Like me to immediately post your docs publicly or tease it for a little while first. <laughs> uh, whatever you prefer, I'm tied up with the FBI issuing a 2702 order on your social media. You aren't that sneaky for your line of work. Screenshot of their Bitcoin wallet transactions. And, of course, Vio just keeps joking around. So... Yeah, it's one of those things where you get a back and forth between like, you know, a professional politician adjacent person and a gay furry. And th this, this, so you, you hold on. On one hand, you've got a conservative American politician, gay furry, okay? And this is the interaction, okay? If you ever thought you lived in the wrong timeline or like the wrong, like, you know, the time in history, you're wrong, okay? You lived long enough to see this fucking I don't know. verbal it's text transaction play beautiful. out. 
Now, of course, you might be like, Muda, that is such an insane level of shit, okay? There's no way that could be real. Bro, Mike Howell hey, literally hey. quote tweeted that exact chat and said, complete and total victory. I forced the gay furry hackers to disband. Oh, my God. Now, I'm going to just leave it right here, ladies and gentlemen. This is a, a story of literally epic proportions, okay? Yeah, one of the uh, largest, I guess, think tanks in the country allegedly has been hacked, okay? Now, if that data is ever going to come out, which it probably won't since it's quote-unquote mostly useless, it is somewhat verified that an actual intrusion had occurred based on the exchange between Mike and Via, okay? Now, looking at this group itself and looking at their history, which is very important why I went into their history, the NATO hack, the various hacks on Israeli, you know, cyber comms, uh, the various uh, hacks on U.S. DOE related enterprises is something that has absolutely put these people not just on a map of fame amongst, you know, hacker circles out there, because these are pretty impressive hacks for the most part. Uh, they're pretty impressive intrusions, especially on targets this big. But when you attack targets this big, uh, I have no doubt that sometime in 2025, maybe 2024 even, that VO and his friends could eventually be outed by the FBI and could absolutely be serving some serious punishment down happen. the road. Um, because it one thing the United States government know. does not take seriously is attacks on its infrastructure, attacks on its organizations, and especially breaches regarding the politicians that make up the government of the United States. But hey, maybe these guys can ride off into the sunset. I wonder if they get overwhelmed if it started happening regularly. I think the main reason is that this is... They knew that this was going to be f the final one because the ones they'd done in the past, nobody gave a shit about. Yeah. They knew, like, hitting this at this time was going to bring... It's it, it, Their goal was to bring attention to the project. Yes. Because they... Cause like, it's not like the Heritage Foundation was going to bring more government heat, right? Like, they probably were already, like, pretty worried about the government heat they already had. And they were talking about mm -hmm. what what should we finish with. And then Heritage Foundation springing up and being such a hot topic lately must yes. have been like that, you know, you know, it's like the, you, it's like you, the, the image where you see the object and the lights behind it and you hear the angels singing, you know, and it does the like zoom into it. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Those punch yes. shots. That's what's yeah. going on. Set and get away. Or maybe this is the story of digital Red Dead Redemption 2, where they're just perpetually on the run till the very end of time. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, that's how gay furries hacked uh, the government. Wild story. <laughs> if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. You have uh, See, editorial boards and columnists and even... Yeah, no, that was way better. Some Democratic activists saying... Are you aware of a CIA psychological profile about you, sir? Would you be interested in hearing what the CIA had to say? This secret study portrays as a brilliant but dangerous megalomaniac who is likely to pursue his own aims in disregard of U.S. interests. He's an uncertain ally. Shall I go on, or would you prefer that I stop, sir?